So very good evening to all participants and welcome you for day three on bootcamp on StatPro. So today we are going to discuss the rest of the topics that is on our dynamic inputs, how we are going to add a dynamic inputs to the model. And we are going to discuss some examples that related to that uh, adding a seismic wave flows, right? So let's see for day three, what are the topics which you are going to come across? So first of all, we are going to discuss about the most two important parameters. So moment release and grouping. So I have already shared you the reading material today I mean, well advanced to you. Just you want to have a, a go through it, right? So why I have shared that is uh, mainly is you can have an idea what we are going to do today. So parallelly, you can see that notes what I have given to you. Uh, uh, certain examples I have shared to you how you are going to do this grouping and also how we are going to do this uh, uh, moment release and what is the concept of moment release and why it is required. And further, we are going to discuss on the topic that is on seismic input and analysis, how we are going to use the IS1893 codebook and how you want to do that inputs in the model. So the two is based on the codebook input. And finally, we have a load combinations, some five set of load combinations. So five basic load combination we are going to discuss today. So these are the topics today we are going to discuss. And first part which we are going to discuss on today is on moment release. So what is the concept of moment release? What is the use of moment release basically? Or you are hearing for the first time might be a few students hearing what is the concept of moment release. So what does this moment release basically it means? So first of all, you should understand the concept of a primary beam and secondary beam. So what is called a primary beam and what is called secondary beam? So this concept is important. So when you say this as a, a primary beam, when you talk about primary beam, so that is basically a beam which is going to rest between two column head. So this is called a primary beam. So where the beam is resting on the column head, right? So this is resting on the column head. So same way, a parallelly, there is another beam. So there is a column. So this is a structure, right? So this is also a beam rested on a column. Now this is also called as primary beam. So we'll put it as PB. So don't take plinth beam here. It is called as primary beam in this part. Now I'm going to connect this also. Right. So this makes my structure. So I have four primary beams where it is traveling on column to column head. Now, when you talk about the moment, the concept of moment, what happened? We know that we are designing as a fixed supports. So what we do, so we see that the beam and the column is going to have a, a rotation. There is a moment we are going to get that point. So at that point, we are going to get two moments. One is the moment which is coming from your beam. One is the moment coming from the column. So I'm taking as MB and MC. So moment from the beam and moment from column. So which is going to carry out at this particular junction, either of these junctions, the moment is going to carry it out. Now, it is the same for all the cases wherever the joint is coming. So all the beam column joint is going to carry a, a moment connections. Now, what is this moment release and where it is going to get affected in the building? Right. So basically where this moment, uh, secondary moment is going to come here, it is on a secondary beam. Now, what is the secondary beam? When a beam is resting over the primary beam. So there is no column phase here. So there is no column connections. So the beam is resting on the primary beam. So what happened here at this particular junction, at this particular joint or here, the moment will be exceeding or it will be excess. So moment will be excess. So the load, the self weight, even though this is not carrying any primary load or any other part, it is carrying only the self weight. Imagine that is carrying only the self weight of the beam. Even though the self weight of the beam is going to create some extra moment at this particular point. So what happened? The member gets overstressed and it will get more beam, uh, more moment at that particular point. So we bring a concept called 
moment release. So we need to release this moment for this secondary beam at the starting point and even at the end point. So we need to release this moment. It is like something called a sugar patient. You cannot give more chocolates. So what happened? It will get up, spoil that person, right? So same way. So when there is some kind of issues here, we cannot overload this secondary beam. So it's as simple example. So the chocolate should not be given to the sugar patients. So it should be distributed to some other person who is not having that effect. So same way, the structure is also taken care how you want to do this analysis. So this secondary beam is creating a moment here. It should be released. That is called as moment release, right? So I will show you in a model also how this is working in a practically how it is going to be done. And second thing, at the same manner, when you have a cantilever beam, when you have a, a cantilever beam. So now let's talk about cantilever beam. So what this cantilever beam is going to do? Same action. So it is also going to create an extra moment, but where? That is a question. So example, your balcony slab. So you have your a terrace or some kind of balcony area. So you have a, some projection here. So let us take this as a balcony now. I'm writing a, a small a cantilever beam here. So now what happens? So let me, uh, sorry, let me change the diagram. So it will make you confused. So let me erase it. I'll draw again. Now we are going to discuss on the uh, cantilever part. Right. So now I have a balcony here. Suppose this is the columns over here. And here is one small column. Now I'm going to bring a cantilever beam here. So this is going to be acting as a, a balcony area or corridor area. So this too is acting as a cantilever beam. CB stands for cantilever beam. And this is a, a beam which is resting on the portion where the slab is going to rest on this portion. Now the same concept, the moment release. Now the moment re release will act on the end portion, on end portions, not on the beginning portion because this is a start portions. So there is a column, so it will take care. At the end portion, there is no column. The, co the beam is projected like this. The beam is projected like this. So what happened? The overturning moments will be there. So there is a failure at this particular joints. So we need to release that moment at this particular point. So the same case here. Right. So this is the concept of moment release. So why we are doing this moment release in cases. Apart from this secondary beam and primer that is cantilever beam, we also work this for pre-stressed concrete. Wherever the pre-stressed concretes are there or panel members which you are designing at the site. So we need to release this moment. Why? You're bringing a precast wall. Suppose you have a precast walls or prefabricated wall structures. Okay, so you're bringing a prefabricated structures and you're going to fix in the building somewhere else, some walls or some kind of shear walls, prefabricated shear walls. You're going to come and connect with the building. So what happened? So at that time, we need to release the structure. So wherever the connection is going to come here and you're going to connect some prefabricated elements. So that should be released. So what happened if you're not releasing, it will be overstress. So that will create a, a more stress failure on this part. So what happened? Ultimately, we will be keep on increasing the size of the beam. So we will be iterating the sizes of the beam from 350, then you will jump to 400, then you will jump to 450, you will not get any results. Again, you will jump to 700 MB, uh, 7, sorry, 700 mm uh, beam size. So you will not get any results. So still the stresses will be more there. So certain cases when you deal with the practical field, so we need to release this moment where there is a chances we need to release that secondary moments. Now, next we are going to move to the groupings. So before going grouping, I'll show you a sample of uh, moment release. So you can see that in under command box, member specifications, and you can see the release. So once you keep on that part, it will ask you where you want to release the moment. So you need to release all the moments, all three directions, X, Y, and Z directions. So you need to release this moment at start point as well as the end point. So once you select, it will ask you assign to the uh, selected members or selected beams, it will ask you. So you can keep on assign so that, that it will be released at start point. And repeat the same, you need to select for the end also, then release again, and it will be getting done. So, but don't release the force. So this is a force. We should not touch this part. So this is a reaction. 
so we should not that, uh, that touch the reactions and this k is your stiffness so we should not deal with the stiffness so stiffness of the member will be taken care by the sizes and the grades which you are using so that will be taken care by the design automatically so only thing we need to bother on the uh, moment secondary moment which is induced in the connections so now you can see the model here so this model shows you without release so this is your secondary beam so there is no column phase here so there is no column here you can see that clearly so what happened due to that point so your extra moment is coming here so you can see that 4 4 5.4 and 4.79 it's creating even though i'm getting in 1.5 dead load live load moments so you can check in both the directions z and y directions so you see that there is an extra moment which is going to create at both the points at the start as the end so you can see either this is a start or this are the end point you can see that now let's see i'm going to release that moment so what happens here so i release the moment at both the directions you can see some all a circle head is available there so once i release the moment you can see on the picture so there is no uh, extra moment is carried on the uh, part of the beam so the beam is normal now so you can see that is zero so same way for this end also you can just scroll it you can see on for other side that will be zero so in the picture also it's clear here so that the moment is distributed so the moments are redistributed to the columns here so it will not have any effects in the building design so this concept is very very important when you go for design field and second you can see this effect and one more note i want to keep here is when you make a beam connection so number of students are uh, doing this mistake when i see some students projects so there are certain failures are coming the reason is they are making this connection like this so you can see this is as one particular beam and this is one beam so they will make another beam connection from here to here and then they will release the moment and they will say the moment is not released it is showing some moment value there so this concept is totally wrong the mistake is if you are going to consider this as a one particular beam so this is one member this is considered as a one member and this is considered as a second member so here what you are doing you are breaking the members so this is one member this is second member this is third member and this is fourth member so the moment is not distributed properly here so you are breaking the elements and your moment is where it will go it will not go anywhere so your structural fail here only so please don't do this mistake so when you add a beam be careful if you are going to design as a single member so select from start to end until or unless it is necessary that you are going to break due to length like 5 meter span so suppose this is 5 meter span this is 5 meter span then add one column bit so you can add some column in between so in such case no need to release there so it depends on the geometry how the what are the sizes you are going to add that right so next part which you want to know is on a uh, grouping column groupings so why grouping is important now imagine i am going to work on a hotel building or a restaurant building okay g plus 6 story building i have a g plus 6 story building so there are number of columns are going to come on the building plans so for all the beams and columns i want to do the detailing so detailing uh, if you will be studying in the rcc so when you go for rcc design you will start doing the detailing work so when you start doing the detailing you will get number of columns say suppose a uh, detailing uh, a structural designer is going to do a design for 1000 column or 1000 plus column which is not possible so we can't do for 1000 plus or uh, do the all the detailing for it so what we are going to do as a structural engineer we are going to do that as called groupings so what is this group so we are going to combine the columns which are going to get similar kind of axial loads so you can see this figure so as we discussed in day 1 and day 2 uh, certain brick wall load how we distribute the uh, dead load and slab loads for your building so i'm just representing a brick wall loads pattern how we need to represent in the uh, auditing or structural auditing or when you submit to the clients so we need to show with different color pens green color or red colors or blue color so we make different kind of uh, representations of the dead loads so here i have showed everything in a one single sheet or else we need to prepare a separate documents separately for dead loads separately for live loads and etc right so now once this is done you can see the certain column heads which is going to be here 
So how we want to group this? So if you give a number, you can see that initially before grouping. So this is before grouping. So before grouping, I did the model. I have applied my loads. Everything is done. Analysis is done. I got I got my all the axial loads with respect to 1.5 dead load plus live load. Now here I have just round off figures. So 187 means I have taken 190. 233 means 240. I have just round off to the near figures. Now after rounding off these figures, you need to see a rule here. So what the rule says for grouping is first your column size and load should be similar value should be similar example you're having a size of 300 by 325 mm size of column and you're getting a load value say suppose 190 kilonewton and i have a same size suppose 300 by say suppose 325 now uh, my load on this particular column is going to exit like suppose 240 so i cannot group because this is very more variations are there it is exiting more than five percentage i can say so i can't group this because here it is 190 and here it is 240 or 270 even you take 270 let be bigger size so i can't do the grouping here one thing second thing which you want to understand is the same column size Right, sorry, the same load. So I'm going to take the same load, 190 kilonewton, but my size is not the same. So size is, let us say, 230 by 300. But I have load is same, so same load value. I can group it or not? No, I can't group this because the column sizes are varying here. Column sizes are varying here. So this rule is not possible here. So the grouping says that your column size and your load should be similar. If it is having any variations in the size or in the variations in the load value, then don't do the grouping, right? So now with that concept, now we are going to see this model. So what we are going to see in this model is, so I have grouped the columns. So I have eight columns. So totally I got around eight column in this model. So various round of values are there. So certain values are starting 160, 190, 240 like this. So finally, what I'm going to do is I'll just look into close and I see where are the columns are coming. So given the number, as yesterday I said, go in an order wise. So from the top left side corner, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8. So out of that eight column, I have shortlisted to four columns. So I will do the design. So. I will do the design of column only for four numbers, not for eight numbers. So just design four columns. I will not do for eight columns. So because the loads are similar, same sizes I have taken. So I'll just do for four column only. So my time is saved here. Second thing, you can see the loads. So where the loads are distributed. So how it is grouped. So C1, 160, C2, 190, C3, 240, and 260. So you may have a question. So how I can do this? So it will come in practice only. But general rule, take that lesser. Uh, you should be around five percentage variations. Don't don't cross this. Suppose you have one sixty and you have some uh, say suppose uh, one seventy five. Can I group? Yes, you can group. So check whether it is within five percentage. You can group it. You can group this also around one seventy. So bring this in one seventy. So you can group the column under 175 kilonewton rather than 160. It is safe. But please do not group a column which is having 160 kilonewton value and which is having 600 kilonewton. Don't group it because here is a vast uh, variations in the values. So we should not group it. Right. Another same says 160 you have. Another thing is you have uh, less than 160. Suppose 135 kilonewton. Can I group this? to this no you cannot group to this so you should bring this to this part so this can be grouped so 135 will bring in the family of 160 kilonewton so like this we need to do the practice so how you get this is after complete analysis you can use a node cursor which i shared in your reading material you can select one one column 
and you can see 1.5 dead load what are the loads value axial load is coming so that to in fy direction only in fy direction and if you need to note the moment for this you can get for mx and mz by axial moments we can design the columns right so this is the first part which we have discussed for grouping and and your uh, specification member release part the next part which you are going to go for is seismic calculations so the detailed calculation is showing here so how we want to design the seismic calculations so we can take any imaginary uh, zone so here i have taken fourth zone and z is 0.24 so those who are not studied a seismic calculation yet so this part will be a challenge for you but those who are already aware about a seismic design so you might be aware about the terms and technology right so for the freshers who is seeing the stat pro for the very first time and the seismic inputs for the very very first time the four notable things which you want to know is a zone one is the zone which zone you are working so for different countries uh, people from abroad are also attending the uh, sessions so according to your code you can use uh, some british standards or uh, american codes which is followed in your country so you can take that and you want to see your country or city which location it is there so you need to identify first is zone so which zone and what are the uh, seismic value so that is uh, shown here as z so that zone value what are you are getting a seismic inputs and then you need to see the soil type what is your soil type hard rock stratum or medium or any clay strata uh, that uh, data is available or not so you need to fix that soil data and then your response reduction factor what is this response reduction factor so when a seismic waves are coming to your building so when a seismic waves are coming from the ground some wave vibration is coming so how this vibration is going to observe in your building so at what time of second you are going to feel it so how that is recorded or how the response is recorded by the system so that is called a dynamic inputs so we have number of methods and analysis procedure to determine this uh, vibration so one such as your table uh, shake table vibrations we can do from shake table vibrations how you want to get your dynamic inputs uh, when some earthquake data is coming so you can do that so again for a linear and non linear part we have like time history method a response spectrum and pushover analysis or uh, again we have some uh, detailed part of for analysis and here we are going to talk only on the response resp factor that is omrf so ordinary moment resisting frame so moment resisting frame so that is called how you want to resist your building from the vibrations so suppose i have a frame i have a frame here some load is uh, some seismic uh, lateral forces are coming or either let's say wind or seismic so there is going to certain displacement in the frame so i want to resist this displacements so how i want to resist this displacement either i can go for shear wall or i can go for bracing so you might be aware about shear wall so one such for resisting your forces lateral forces or your bracings certain kind of k bracings or knee bracings we have different types of bracing element or viscous dampers we have certain kind of hydraulic dampers which can resist your displacements so that is a higher end what kind of uh, damping systems you are going to use that can be kept here so after the zone the next part which you want to know is your dimensions of the building after zone those are studying for first time you can go for the dimensions of the building so the dimension of building is both x and z direction total dimensions starting to end so irregular geometry let us say any irregular geometry whatever the size or geometry shape so x to z shape so you need to take from x to z so consider that shape uh, dimension and then total height from the ground level so what is your height of the building so total height of the building from ground so if some course have, there is a basement so you need to consider certain case is we need to take the basement height also certain building does not have a basement so we can take from ground level what are the total height of the building so with that data we come to know what is your uh, x direction and z direction so in stat pro sorry uh, i gone here it is y direction so let us say that is a i have replaced here as y okay so due to this is a different software right so we can take that as z here i'll just replace that z 
So what are the total dimensions of the building? So you need to take in X direction and Z directions, both the directions. Plan. So what is my X dimension totally? And what is my Z dimension total? And then you need to calculate this formula. That is your acceleration time. At what moment the uh, earthquakes are is to be recorded. So that is your acceleration time. So we calculate that with without brick wall and with brick wall. Two concepts are there. I have shared the code book. So without brick wall and with brick fill infills. So this is with brick infills. Certain case we have, you have some frames. So you need to calculate this part. So here you can see this D. So this is a dimension in X, dimension in Z. So you calculate your acceleration time with respect to total height of the building. And then similar way we have calculated the dead loads, whatever you have calculated, the same can be kept for this part. We're going to take these values in the software. So we are going to incorporate these values in the software part. And then the third part which you want to know is on the load calculation, that is load combinations. So these are the five basic set of load combination. So you can take this five basic load combinations. So whatever the model you're creating, so the building is going to deflect either in the negative X direction or negative Z direction or positive direction. So we don't know which direction the building is going to go ahead. So suppose this is a building, so it's going to get vibrated. So when the vibration is there, the building may collapse in this direction or building may collapse in other directions, suppose on opposite side. So we don't know, we can't judge it. So we can find out where is the maximum failures are coming with this five basic idea. Apart from this five basic idea, the number of students do one basic mistake. So without understanding the basics, they just simply fall to auto load combinations. So number of students I have seen uh, uh, in teaching, so they go for auto load combination. They don't know what is a combination at all. So just they go and jump into auto load combination seeing some YouTube videos or some other part, they jump directly and go and fall into auto load combination. So please understand what is that load combination is. So this load combination will do the iteration. So certain kind of iteration like 1.2 times factors or 1.2 again, 1.5 and 0.9 dead load combinations. So number of combinations are there near about 23 to 25 combinations are there when you run auto load combinations. So we don't want that 23 or 25 load combinations, which is there. So if you're going to start a basic level, this five is more than sufficient for your seismic analysis. So you can go with this five basic part, right? So another one important part. So the terrace live loads, what are the live loads you're going to incorporate? So that is if it is increasing more than that three kilonewton per meter square. So 25 percentage reduction should be done. So more than three, that is 50 percentage reduction should be given. Right. So I'll explain you all this part in the code books. So these are certain important part which you need to consider in the calculation of seismic. Now I'm just shifting to the next part in the stat pro. So I'm just sharing my screen there. I'll discuss all this part quickly there. Okay, so I hope the screen is visible now, right? Okay, so you can see this first model which we are discussing on the moment release. So this is a model without moment release. So this is your secondary beam. So when we see that particular point, so you can see this. So what are the load combination you're getting? So finally you can see this bending moment for this particular beam. So how it is going to get failure? So you can see this moment are generated here, 5.48 and 4.78 here. The same model, which is same model with every details is same, all the loading, everything is correct. So I have created a with release concept. So with release concept. So when you see this model, so this model is run with moment release concept. So click on that particular part and you can see that again, you can see, so nothing is available there. So it will be zero. So you can see that is zero here. So by this way, the stresses on this particular part is 
released even though the beam is not having any other dead loads only self weight it is having so i am not giving any extra load on this part so even the parapet load which you see on other case so here you can see some kind of parapet cases are there so when you see this case so here you can see this parapet wall loadings so some dead load cases are present so in such case we need to release that part also then secondly you are going to discuss on the supports so today i start discussing on the supports so i have shared you the files so this is your day 3 file so grouping and member release i have discussed the next is your supports so coming to supports you are already aware about fixed supports normally all buildings we go for fixed supports but when you go for pinned certain cases where you want to give a pinned support especially in the truss analysis so we go for pinned supports so there is only fx fy fz that is the restraints over there so bust to case is no problem at all so pinned and fixed you can directly see on the uh, start pro when you click on supports so you when you click on create support it's easy to identify fixed supports and pinned support but my question is i need a roller supports i need a roller support so how i can prefer so roller supports are fixed but so which axis you are going to apply sorry i have made a drawing here so please update it so it should be a roller support i made a mistake here please update in your drawing so right so roller support if you have that is fx and mx mz should be released so that should be restrained so you need to put a tick mark on your stat pro so where you have or support enforced but so right so here you can just put on this mx and z so what this mean so you have rest releasing this reactions on x direction and the moment along x and z direction but not in y direction so the reactions are there so this depends on which axis you are going to give your roller suppose i'm going to give a roller support here in this direction so there is a different concept how i want to release there so i will release there as fy not fx so please understand the concept so when you go for that particular part where you are going to release uh, keep your axis of your uh, roller support with respect to that axis you need to release if i am going to keep a roller support in x direction so this is your x directions so i'll give as fx and mx and mz suppose it's a y direction inclined so there i should change it so it is not same for all the cases so this case differ for where your support is fixed so your support is in x direction or your support is in y direction so it depends on that so y direction means like some kind of gantry girders some kind of cranes or mobile cranes so in such case they have in y directions also the roller supports will be in a y directions so they move in a vertical manner so they need to release in that part or your uh, bookshelves or some kind of racks or steel racks you are going to design a mobile steel racks you want to design so in such case again so you want to keep certain kind of uh, hinges so you go for pin dolls so it depends on the application where you are going to use it and then the part is your uh, multi springs so multi linear springs and your foundation springs so especially you might be heard about a machine foundation or in your concrete technology lab you might be seeing a table vibrator so some table vibrator you see all four side there is a spring attached to that so when you start your vibrating machine what happened the table start vibrating so where these vibrations are going one such simple example to the springs so the spring is taking your vibrations all the springs is taking your vibrations so there is a stiffness of spring is defined so in such case we go for multi linear spring or foundation part suppose your soil somewhere you have a soil compactions or some kind of a dampers so you need to give a spring for the mat foundations so there we use the foundation parts and specially inclined so where you go for inclined so where you have a, some kind of brazing element or some kind of a stiffness method that is your viscous damping or some kind of brazing we can go for inclined method so tension and compression zone is basically for compression only where your soil is again relating to the soil only so compressions of soils are happening there we need to give up tensions or compressions and next we are going to move for the load definitions which you are going to quickly design in the stat pro i directly go here so first is the uh, vehicle definitions so the vehicle definitions are given as per 
IRC 6, Indian Road Conqueror 6. So that is another separate code for a uh, bridge designs. So when you go for bridge designs, we have it. So you can see one sample example where the vehicle uh, directions are moving. So you can see this part. So how to define it is first you need to select the vehicle type. There are four major types which you have. Class AA tracked, class AA wheeled, class A and class B. Under this, there are various types of values. Again, I'll show you later on. So a certain set of values are there. What is the load value for your class A? Or what is the axle load value? So some has 200, some has 350. So like this, various combinations are there. So according to that, we need to define the load values. And this width, which you see on the screen, you can see, I'll show you a, a sample model here. Once you go to general and load definitions, here you can see this vehicle definitions. When you click here, it asks you the distance. What is the distance of that part? So how you want to define that distance? What is the load value and basic distance? So that is the axle value. So from starting from first axle to rear axle. So imagine your truck, a big truck is there with four wheels. From the starting wheel, that is your zero. And to the rear wheel, back end, what is the distance? So we need to give that by this. So front two axles. So when I talk about two axles, so two axle is like this. So this is called axle. So what is the weight, uh, weight of this part? So from here, it starts as a zero and it goes to the backside axle. So second value. Imagine there is a different types of pressure values in the tire. So when you go for filling your air, so you see that uh, pressure in the petrol pump, you see when you go with your parents or your father or you take your bike, you go and fill your front tire and back tire. They used to adjust the pressure value and they adjust the front wheel and back wheel with certain pressures. Yes, of course, in the same case, we have different type of load pressures, which is going to be taken care in the vehicle directions. So according to the vehicle directions, we need to define that in the vehicle load definitions. So that's what I showed a small diagram here. And secondly, we are not discussing about the wind load. So wind load, a uh, step-by-step procedure. So just I have shared you the highlights, what we need to consider as per 875 part three. Right. So here are again the categories, how you want to bring your categories of buildings, how you want to bring this part. So finally, we want to bring this 0.6 into V square Z. So that is your wind pressure. So again, I'm showing you how to define the wind pressures. So just you can go here, you can see this part and you can find add, and then you need to give your wind pressure with respect to your height. So what you want to give. Again, certain cases, the students basically blindly give this part. So I have seen a number of students blindly just they give it as like this and they finish the work job. So you click it. OK, they submit it. Then they will say factor as 1.5 or 1.2. Whatever they think they give it. Now you can see this. It's a uh, height of the building is not more than that three meter. So how come you say that the wind intensity is given here? So it is basically wrong. So it is 12 meter height is showing. So don't do this kind of mistakes in exam also. So please take care of this. So we should not use this AC7. So how you want to do this calculation is with respect to height. So I showed that over here. So this is the table. So we need to uh, do the interpolations for the values. So what is the height of the building? So you can see this clear height. So each zone has a, a different height. So let me show you in here. Yeah, this is a code book. So here you can see this part. So mostly you might be studied in your classes or in labs. So your teacher might be taught this, right? So here we have this uh, set of values. Zone one, yeah, this terrain heights. So with respect to height, we need to do the interpolations. And then we need to incorporate the values over there. So finally, we get the intensity and the height value. You should be taken care. Of. And one more important thing: the data for India, it is more than 10 meter above the sea level. So we have the data about 10 meter height. So when you see some YouTube video, they give the wind pressure here also. You see some icons, so the uh, lines will be coming here also. They blindly gives here all this part as wind. So it is not that. So if this is three meter height, okay, basically this is a three meter height. So don't give, give a 
a wind pressure here so no need of wind pressure 1.5 and this is 3 meter sorry this is 1.5 and this is 3 meter so no need to give this height 3 meter it is less than 10 meter why the reason is so again the code is saying that it is available only after 10 meter height it is effective so please take care of that uh, important clauses which is given over here so you can see this part so basic wind speed for india it's available after 10 meter height mean ground level so adjacent buildings are already occupied by some other buildings so you don't have such effect of wind at taking part in your building so it is safe enough but yes but if you have some kind of uh, tall structures like a uh, 10 story building g plus 6 story building or 5 story building then you can go for combinations and you can find out your wind values right so finally then we have discussed about your seismic so these are the seismic inputs and load combinations also have given to you and very first day a uh, student asked me sir i have facing some problem here in uh, generate load some problems are coming so how i want to avoid this error so when you click on generates so when you go for seismic so let me show you that seismic so when you click on seismic definition add and you select your indian code so 2005 you can go ahead and here you can see this generate so for first time when you click there is an error so you'll not get this part in your software so number of students reported i am not getting this part or uh, issues so this is nothing but the code book is not updated to the software so there is a small issue in this part so you can solve that part i will share that also so we have that uh, material how you want to do that so let's see that i have for you i have kept that error yeah i have this part so you can take this part so how you want to solve that i'll share this file later on you just copy this link what i have provided here just you copy this fully all together with including your quotations right so those who are having that problem i will share this in your email ids you can take this just click on run so you have a cmd command prompt so you see cmd type cmd and right click as run as administrator so that is important so please don't click uh, simply cmd so once you click simply it will not take any effect you can see this user uh, my laptop name will show here so don't do that so you can do that cmd command prompt right click run as administrator so click that you see windows 32 file will come you can see a windows 32 file will be appearing so this is the right procedure so what i you do you just copy this fully just copy this control c and put it there and press enter just press enter so you'll see this successfully it is updated so that once it is done just you can close it and you can come back to the stat pro and you can open this and you'll find the generate button is on fine so i will explain you this error also later on i'll share you that file also right so here you can see the city wise as well as zone wise what is available zone 4 values all the data are incorporated here so as we discussed about omrf and smrf so two main important topic i'm discussing so special moment resisting is some case of like a, a where the seismic effect is very heavy or i want to resist the frame element a more rigid or more connection to the seismic part so i can go for smrf but in the same case i am going to give a, a shear wall connection so some shear wall or ductile detailing so then i can go for a shear wall connection so concrete ordinary shear wall connections or ductile shear wall connections so you can see that also ductile shear wall connections both so you can use this when you design as a shear walls for a building suppose i want to make a a shear wall here so i can go for shear wall design also but please excuse me but uh, ductile detailing is a different area so that takes a different time slot for discussing on ductile detailing it's a different particular totally different so we need to think about that right so you can use omrf at present so what are the values it will be coming there and for hospital building all important buildings you can take 1.5 so factor and soil data whatever is available for you and damping percentage you should take five percentage so you can take 0.5 percentage as a damping ratios and this is your time period ta is x and ta is z so what we calculated in the sheet that you need to add it here so it's your dimension of the building so for this what i'm going to show is 
I have already done a model here. You can see this is a seismic building. So this is a complete seismic building. So here, all the cases are added by myself. So you can see this part. So the sulfate of the building. Now, why we need to do a floor weight? And you can see here, the roof load is not there. Roof live load is not there. So we should not allow any roof live load on seismic model under seismic definition. Make my word clearly. When you are dealing in seismic definition, seismic live load should not apply. The code say that is zero. So we are not considering live load as for your seismic inputs. Right. What is the reason for it? So the reason is, so whenever you get a seismic or some, uh, what is that called? A vibration, there is a seismic effect or earthquake. Do anyone go and stand on the terrace for saving yourself? Do you know that seismic is going to come to the building? So this building is going to collapse. In such case, your people are, uh, you say all the people are saved at the terrace level? No, right? So it is not safe to a hostage or rescue people from the terrace level. So in such case, there is a reason we are not consider any live load consideration on the terrace level. So the terrace level live loads is zero when you define your seismic inputs. Second thing, what are the member load? What are the load value you consider for a brick wall? The equivalent opposite load should be given. The reason again behind here is the seismic it is, is a base shear concept. So what is happening here? So whatever the seismic weight is coming towards the gravity. So this is say, suppose this is a, a ground and this is your seismic weight, right? So the vibration should be balanced. So the gravity load, whichever is going to come fall here to the building structure, it should be balanced with the seismic force. So whatever the load of the building structure, the same equivalent amount of seismic input should be given to the ground. Got it? So that's what we say this as minus, wherever you give the brick wall load, uh, minus 13.1 kilonewton, whatever the loads we discussed yesterday. So we put a minus due to against the gravity. But here in the seismic definition, when you give, this should be in opposite directions. So we give it as plus 13.1 kilonewton per meter. So we are balancing that. So that finally we call a base shear concept, VB. So what is happening to the building? So what is your base shear? So it is equal or not. If it is not coinciding, your model is fail. If it is coinciding and it is within the limit, safe. So that's your seismic analysis. So that we give here with positive signs. Whatever you see here, it is 13.1. For which beams I selected, for the same beams I can do it. So same way for the 1.1, what are the beams you have given openings? Where are the openings are there? So same beams have the same load, but in the opposite sign. Now, similarly for the floor dead loads, wherever the floor dead loads you are given zero to six level up to here, it's floor. So floor, floor, floor. But roof dead load is there, right? So roof dead load is there. So where it is at this part. So next seismic weight of the building. So once this definition is done, then you go for load case detail. So you can go for load case detail. So you can start with your seismic inputs. So you need to start with four basic input, X positive, X negative, Z positive, Z negative. So to do that, you can click on add button and go here to seismic. So you can add an X and Z not in Y direction. So we are not considering in the building height. So we are not take this Y directions. So you need to take the factor one for positive X, negative means negative one for X directions. So like this, we need to define the values over there. So what are the values you are giving? You need to give it. And then finally, you need to see for Z direction also. And finally, dead loads, whatever you calculate as self weights, floor load, all you give, live loads, everything you can give here. Now, load combination, as I showed you, 1.5 dead loads. So this combination is created here. Right. So how to do the load combination? So click on load case detail. Click on add button. So I have already shared this file and uh, day two also with numbers. So you can see this define combinations. 
so here you need to type the name what are the names you are going to give so that 1.2 or 0 0.9 value suppose i need 0 0.9 dead load only so i can give this factor as 0 0.9 now you can see this uh, SRSS and ABS method. So this is uh, some kind of a uh, linear and nonlinear method for time history method and response vector method. So square root method and absolute modulus method we have. So no need to touch that at present for the beginner level. So you can click on normal combinations and what are the load factor you want to give. You can give for 0.9 and select the dead load. You just put this on other side. So it will get added to your structure. Now. When you find out the load auto load combination, you can see this auto load combination. So why I'm not doing this basically is here, you can see some kind of code directly Indian code. What are the value you have? It shows your structure, steel structure or plastic structure, what are the structures available? You click generate loads, it combines around 25C as I said, 27 combination it creates. So you should understand what is this combination basically. So five, one, 0 0.506150 what is that basically so please understand and do then it is okay but without understanding this please don't do that now i want to repeat this cycle for certain repetition of load so suppose i have a time second 0 0.1 0 0.2 so i can click on repeat click on repeat load so for 10 point 0.1 second point 0.2 second point 0.3 seconds so such kind of analysis i'm doing then I can, I can click on repeat load, then it get added on the structure. You can see that. So everything will be added over here. So what is this phi 1.54 minus 1.5? Phi means the case, the dead load case, which you created. Phi means your dead load case, what you created. So dead load case is your dead load. So dead load multiply with 1.2. So sixth load is your live load. So live load into 1.2. Second x negative so this is combinations so it is taking us dead load 1.2 live load 1.2 seismic negative 1.2 so please don't do this so the shortcut to delete this file so please don't go and delete one by one by one delete here just open your stat editor you can edit from there directly so open stat editor whichever the load case you are not required so select that load generation directly fully from here and then delete it right up to this road lid repeat so delete that right save the file and close it so you'll get your back file so this is how we do it and we get your file retrieve right so i'm just stopping here for the day and we'll go further for this part and uh, let me stop sharing my screen Yes, so already I said, please give your feedbacks. So that is considered as your a part of uh, attendance as well as for your certifications. So please give your feedback. I'm sharing the link right now. You can go ahead, you can give your feedbacks right now. And you are open now to discussions. For any questions, you can go ahead, you can drop your questions there. So I'm closing the recording sessions and then we'll proceed for the discussion round and we'll have some question clarification. Thank you for the day.